So this is to kind of give just a, a snapshot of how to view the strength of the information that you receive, or how much confidence can you put in it that it's correct and true and usable. Um, the, there's two, well, two slash three main objectives of the nutrient timing within the post-exercise anabolic window, which depending on what literature you look at can range from anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes post-workout. Okay, so that's the anabolic window. And the underlying premise behind the anabolic window is that the timing of your nutrients at a certain point or points in the day can have greater impact or be even more important than the total amounts by the end of the day. So that was the claim that was made across multiple papers and certainly in the book. It applies actually very well to multi-stage, multi-event, glycogen depleting endurance sports. It applies very well to that, but it kind of got, you know, the, the graphic designers didn't necessarily get the memo on uh, uh, when we put on the cover. Um, and yeah, general life population specificity reliance upon short-term data or uh, acute effect data, uh, acute response, acute effect data as we call in the jargony world. We can also conclude that, well, that 70 grams of protein is not all going to waste because it crossed over the 20 to 40 gram threshold. Uh, another thing that we can sort of kick around the ideas of is that there can be other benefits to an increased protein dose in a given sitting or throughout the day that are separate from anabolism or anti-catabolism. Right? We've got thermic effect, we've got satiety, we've got what the researchers call metabolic feedback regulation. So potential increases in immunity, other things like that. So um, it's not necessarily about the uh, muscle protein synthesis. However, the researchers are correct in saying that muscle protein synthesis does appear to top out at about 40 grams. Yeah, you guys ready for me to kick it up? That's just a little bit. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, wait yeah. for it. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> Some sort of some sort of magic because it's, it's always kind of cool when you when you can gain some special knowledge and do a little tweak in the you know in, in the norm and have a little bit of a, a of a special gem to program in to a plan to help it push the envelope. Now in our paper we did mention at the end that these weren't trained subjects. Um, we basically rounded up uh, just normal healthy normal weight college-aged women, and we didn't find any difference in fat loss or muscle retention uh, between the conditions. We never, ever quite figure it out. And because it's so complex, there's going to be a lot of gray area, which is good for the march of research. We can keep doing what we're doing and finding out new things. But that creates a lot of room for disagreement and controversy in how scientists interpret the data as well as what the, you know, what the data might be in the first place. This is a big reason people are self-centered. So a lot of folks without a basic concept of what science is all about is they'll try something and if it works for them, then they assume that it'll just work for everybody. So then they end up preaching it to everybody. And people think in black and white terms. That's the human nature tendency to just think in extremes instead of thinking along, you know, that there, there is a broad continuum, and there are many, many shades of gray. And uh, people, <laughs> this is the point where I could make a 50 shades of gray joke, but I won't. Uh -huh. um, people tend to think in binary terms. It's a human nature thing. And also, another big one, uh, even amongst the, the, the top tier scientists in the field, people are either unaware of or they're in denial of the totality of the research. <laughs> to, to conclude, some kind of hormone, something. You know, they have so <clears throat> insulin fairies and maybe too much insulin fairies in the air, wherever you're at. You know, that's what's causing obesity. 
We'll look at the elephant in the room. Look at the size of the elephant's fra frappuccino Starbucks drink. But you know, people refuse to look at the elephant in the room. And instead, you hear pe people preaching all kinds of wild, far-fetched hypotheses about what causes obesity. And Alan is fantastic as always. This is the third time I've seen him present. So I, you almost expect that you might see similar slides and similar kind of thoughts and ideas. And well, the science doesn't kind of go from here to over here. Yes, there are similar themes and ideas and there, prob there was some slides and I'd seen before, but there was still new content and it was refreshing to keep it up to date and really engaging. And Alan for me was the funniest he's ever been. Um, I don't know how he can get much funnier, but he was absolutely hilarious, um, but more engaging. And I think something I really took away from Alan was that the spirit of science is discovery. So people who, if the evidence right now says we should eat this amount of this, this amount of this, and like low carb isn't necessarily the best, that's fine. We, and we can use that to make our practices. But in future, if it changes, Alan isn't going to keep to his loving of carbs, he's going to change his stance. The only way I could see him not change his stance is if coffee came out as being like poison or something, then he might get a bit angry. But in all seriousness, the spirit of science is discovery and the truth. And then we can use that to individualize. Um, and that is what I really took from Alan. And also the, the fact we can be very flexible with nutrition. So long as we like training, you get these grounding principles in place and you can develop and individualize up for different people, for yourself, um, different approaches and tactics for dieting and for gaining muscle. And it's very exciting. It's very exciting. And otherwise programming would be boring if there was only black and white ways of doing everything. And for myself as a coach, it gave me new ideas and passion and motivation to help different people in different ways and find different solutions to everyone's goal while obviously satisfying this base pyramid. Uh, something I do take away from Alan and I think it's very important for everyone is optimality is one thing but personal optimality is another thing and adherence is king. So if the optimal approach is something they can't adhere to it's not optimal for them. And I think that's a very important thing to take across.